coordination chemistry group, my uh, my group is dealing with a few kinds of um, coupling reactions, namely Hack and Suzuki reactions. Hack and Suzuki had received their Nobel Prize in 2010. So you can look this up about Suzuki and Hack. These uh, scientists have received Nobel Prize due to their outstanding work in uh, Hack and Suzuki coupling reactions. Mm -hmm. During my PhD years, I'm dealing with uh, Sodogashira coupling reaction. So uh, there are many other coupling reactions. When we talk about coupling reactions, you want to couple carbon and carbon. So carbon-carbon coupling reactions. So the carbon and carbon can be coupled through single bond, double bond, or triple bond. So in Sodogashira reaction, my interest is to couple carbon, uh, carbon triple bond. So what do we call this when we have triple bond between carbon and carbon? Anyone? You can always interrupt me yeah, uh, throughout the session. This is fine. Let me check. What what is it called when you have C triple bond C? Yeah. Ikatan, ikatan ganda tiga. So what, what ikatan is it? rangkap tiga, apa namanya? Alkuna. Alkuna, yeah. Or okay. we call it alkyne, yeah. So we have alkene, alkene, and also alkyne. So in alkyne, we are going to produce uh, alkyne in Sodogashira reaction. So for Sodogashira um, reaction letter, we're going to learn on how these shift phase complexes catalyze the whole reaction, how fast it can be. So let me start with something that is very generic here. I'm sure that you all know. What is the function of catalyst? The presence of catalyst in any chemical reactions will help speed up the reaction. How does that happen? Why, with the presence of catalyst, the reaction is getting better and faster? Because you see here, we have energy profile here. You can see this is energy profile of the chemical reactions. Any, any given chemical reactions will have the same profile. So cat means catalyzed reaction and cat means uncatalyzed reaction without catalyst and it is with catalyst. When we plot the diagram energy uh, against, uh, for, uh, against the progress of reaction, we can see that initially we have reactants. Yes, definitely. You want to produce the products with lower energy. But before you can do that, before any reaction can proceed, we have to make sure that the activation energy is the activation energy is overcome first. Yeah. So the activation energy here must be low enough for the reaction to proceed. So you can see without catalyst, the activation energy is higher. With catalyst, the activation energy is lower. So this can actually be calculated and quantified uh, through certain um, uh, calculations and formula. Point being here is that we need catalyst to lower down the activation energy so the reaction can be happening at a faster rate, which means to say we can convert reactants to products at a faster, faster rate. So now let's talk, let's talk about the role of metal complexes or organometallic catalysts. So we you have seen probably these catalysts in years of studying chemistry because the presence of organometallic catalysts can uh, only uh, not only can be seen in uh, organometallic uh, subject but you can see also the presence and the significant role of the catalyst in some other reactions in organic reactions so when you are learning uh, organic chemistry or uh, advanced organic chemistry normally uh, your lecturers will mention about the importance of organometallic catalyst. For example, the first one we have in the early uh, 19,000, we have Oswald process. This is the reaction to convert ammonia into nitric acid. So the catalyst used was platinum. Yeah. In 1910, we have Hubble process. We have fixed nitrogen in atmospheric uh, to change them into ammonia. So we use iron based catalyst. And then in 1956, we have Ziegler-Natta catalysis. So this is to produce hard polymers. 
So the catalyst is titanium based catalyst. In 1960, we have Wecker catalysis. So to convert alkene into aldehyde, so the catalyst was palladium based catalyst. In the recent years, we have 1996, 1966, we have Monsanto process where we produce um, acetic acids. And this acetic acid uh, catalyzed by rhodium based catalyst. So 90% of the newly developed processes using catalyst. So catalyst is somehow is a must in any reaction. Reactions can happen, but at a slower rate without catalyst. So that is the generic, generic introduction or brief uh, background about catalysis. Yeah. Um, I have one hour, right? Uh, Dr. Yusi? How many hours do I have? Just one hour. One hour. Okay. Now, um, let us, let me bring back my chemical structures, my compounds. Uh, well, six, seven years ago, I, well, in 2014, yeah, I started doing this. Uh, these are all shift passes. So they, they have two main series. One is called L1 series. The other one is called L2 series. For L1 series, the uh, compound is, uh, the compound was obtained from uh, primary diamine. So this is aromatic primary diamine. So we complex this ligand with palladium and also nickel, producing square planar palladium and nickel complexes respectively. So different uh, ligand will have to bear different uh, substituents. So the first one is unsubstituted ligand. The second one is substituted with chlorine. The third one is substituted with chlorine or chloro, chloro, chloro. And we have M here. M stands for methyl. And we have also methoxy here um, as a substituent. Now for um, N, N is actually stands for nitro. I tried to synthesize complexes from nitro uh, ligand, but it was not successful yet. So we can only get ligand here, but not metal complexes. In catalysis letter, we we uh, are not using uh, ligands as catalysts. Although organic ligands can be a good catalyst, but for the sake of the objective of the research, I did not include ligand as a catalyst. I did only test these uh, nickel and palladium complexes as my catalyst in Sonogashira reaction. L2 series, the difference is the source of amine. L1 series derived from aromatic diamine. So L2 series derived from aliphatic diamine. So the difference in here will give some significant results and findings later. So we can see that most of my uh, ligand, L2 series, they cannot form a good complex with nickel salt. So that's why I didn't get nickel here, except for... Um, L2N, yeah. L2N means uh, nitro substituted ligand. For this nitro ligand, I can get palladium and also nickel. But for some other um, ligands, I could not get the nickel complexes. So these palladium and nickel complexes will be used as a catalyst. So there are many uh, research doing this. Um, some of them tested. Uh, monodentate, bidentate, ligand, and metal complexes as catalysts in copper free sonogashira reaction. But I'm interested in testing um, palladium and nickel tetradentate uh, complexes as a catalyst in copper free sonogashira reaction. Yeah. So this is the flow of catalytic activities of my shift based complexes. So we have palladium and nickel complexes. So there are a few steps that we have to do in order to analyze the performances of these shift based complexes as a catalyst in copper free Sonogashira reaction. So the first thing that we do, so we call this homogeneous catalytic testing. Homogeneous means um, the catalytic system is having the same physical state as your catalyst. So we know my catalysts are all in the solid form, but we have to dissolve them in certain solvent. So in my reactions, I'm using uh, DMSO, the metal support, uh, DMSO, uh, as my solvent. 
So I dissolve them in the MSO first, and then I mix them with some other reactants in some natural reaction. So we can call this whole reaction as um homogeneous. Yeah. But in catalytic uh, studies, we can also use heterogeneous uh, catalysts. So later I will talk a bit about heterogeneous catalysts using certain heterogeneous support. So the difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous is that people prefer homogeneous because in homogeneous catalytic system, the catalytic sign, the catalytic active sign is more is easier to be spotted. But for heterogeneous catalysis, it's not easy for us to identify to indicate which one is the catalytic active site. So I prefer homogeneous for the heterogeneous, but nonetheless, we have to try also heterogeneous because the benefit of using heterogeneous catalysis is that you can take, uh, you can reuse and recycle and uh, the catalyst more means after one reaction you can take the heterogeneous catalyst out and then you can use the same catalyst in this in the next reaction so that is the benefit of using heterogeneous catalyst the first thing that i did was i screen with because i have many complexes so i do not know which of these two series will work better than the other so the first thing that i did was screening the best catalyst series so i have to screen first so the best catalyst series, um, well, I pick uh, palladium nickel. I, I pick one palladium series, and then test with the uh, general protocol first, yeah, and see which series work better. And then later, I will choose that uh, better performing series to be used in the optimization. So from my studies, I found that the best catalyst series was those from palladium 2 l2 series so one with the aliphatic uh any during optimization uh, processes i have to use different kinds of bases so we have potassium hydroxide as base we have cesium carbonate as base we have triethyl amine as base and piperidine if you notice the last two are actually organic uh, base and the first two is inorganic they are inorganic base so different kind of base will give different uh, catalytic performance of the catalyst and the second one in b we have catalyst loading catalyst loading means how many percentage of catalyst that you that you want to put in any reaction well generally the lower the better but somehow when you put lower um, amount of catalyst in your reaction you will not get 100% of conversion. So that's why somehow the higher the better. Again, you have to optimize the reaction to see which of these um, four parameters will give you the best yield of the reaction. And then we have temperature 80, 100, 120, and 40 degrees Celsius. So in certain reports in the literature review, you can see that they said we cannot go beyond 100 because beyond 100, the condition is considered harsh. But there is debatable. If you are lowering the temperature, the, the sacrifice that you have to make is you will not get the uh, desired amount of product. If you are using higher um, temperature, you can get more product. But probably the disadvantage is that it's harsh. It's harsh in the sense that somehow it breaks certain certain um, chemical bonds, or it can cause some. Uh, it will give you some byproducts instead of the main products. The third one is the evaluation of the PD two and nickel two. So once I uh, obtain the results for the best base, the best catalyst loading, and the best temperature. I have to uh, evaluate the performance of all the metal complexes, palladium 2 and nickel 2 complexes, as homogeneous catalysts in copper free sonar graduation. Now, uh, we have to test these complexes in the optimized condition. Yeah? Last but not least, in order to know whether uh, we got the right product or not, we have to make some isolation process. Isolation means you have to 
isolate the product yeah, because after the catalyzed reaction, you have to isolate the product. So once the product is isolated, you have to dry it overnight, for example, and then you have to characterize the isolated product. You have to go through the same spectral analysis again, like uh, a limited analysis, and then you have to run some, uh, what we call that, uh, after limited analysis, you have to run some uh, NMR studies and also some IR studies in order to know how pure the product is. Yeah. Following so far, semuanya okay. Masih boleh faham ke? <laughs> Harapnya masih boleh follow ya. Are you still following? Ya, yeah, bagaimana students? Apakah <laughs> mau bertanya dulu atau bisa dilanjutkan? Takkan ini boleh ya? Ya. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Yusi, boleh faham ya? Ya. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, as I said, uh, I'm going to test all my compounds. Uh, nickel and palladium as catalyst in sonogasha reaction. This is the screening process. Screening process means I take uh, uh, complexes from L1 series, L2 series randomly, and then I check which of these two series work better than the other. So as simple as that. So this is the, the general protocol which I adopted from the previous studies. So we have iodobenzene here as the reactant. We have also phenyl acetylene as a reaction, as the reactant, I'm sorry. So we have ethylene diamine as the base, the MSO as a solvent. We have uh, and then 100 degrees Celsius as our general uh, temperature. And the reaction was let to happen for 12 hours. It's a very long reaction. And we are expecting this to, uh, to be our product, which is diphenyl acetylene. And our byproduct is hydrogen iodide or hydroiodic acid. So the samples were taken at zero hour, three hour, meaning once you put the reaction in, when you put the reaction mixture in the uh, carousel, this is carousel, yeah, uh, the one that I show you here, this is carousel. We put the reaction here. When we put the reaction mixture here, we have to take one sample at zero hour before the reaction started. And then at three hours, six hours, and also at 12 hours. So all the samples were analyzed using gas chromatography and also FID as detector. So based on the GCFID, we have to calculate the percent conversion. The percent conversion is A internal. This is area under the peak before the reaction started, which is zero. And then uh, conversion means after the reaction ended or completed. That is the conversion, that is the area under the peak for GCF ID chromatogram divided by the A internal, uh, initial. Okay, so inside here you can imagine we have one mole of iodobenzene, we have 1.5 mole of phenacetylene, we have one millimole percent of palladium 2 complexes, this is the catalyst loading, and we have two mole of acetylene, and we have six mil of uh, the MSO. Yeah. Uh, selepas itu, after that, what we did was, after we run the uh, screening process, we ran the optimization process. So, for optimization process, I took palladium complex as uh, L2 series as my catalyst. And then, I optimized the reaction using different type of base, different type of catalyst loading, and different temperature. So the one that I put in bold is actually the, the, the best one. Yeah. So from ba for base, kita dapat uh, potassium hydroxide. For catalyst loading is 2 millimole percent. And temperature is 140 degrees Celsius based on the re reaction. So I'm going to be showing you some results after this. Yeah. So couple free solugasha reaction, once you get the optimum reaction, um, you got potassium hydroxide here as, um, sorry. Okay. Once you get potassium hydroxide and you got catalyst loading and you got temperature as your, the best, 140 as the best temperature, you can test all palladium and nickel complexes in the same reaction. Yeah. Now, this is the results. When I screen the best catalyst series, as I said earlier, I got L2 series 
So you can see for VDR2F, the percentage is 31%. And then you can see that generally we can, with uh, L2 series, we are performing better than that of L1 series. Yeah. So VDR2C, 57%. With metal, you get 73%. With nitro, you get 90, 91%. So somehow in this reaction, we can see that the presence of nitrogen uh, dioxide, nitro compound, will give you better percent conversion of iodobenzene. So by the way, we have two reactants earlier. Ada dua reactant di sini. Yeah, ada iodobenzene dan ada juga finance spelling. So saya menggunakan iodobenzene sebagai reference. So we wanted to see how much iodobenzene uh, converted in the given reaction. Yeah, so that is how we monitor the progress of the reaction. So this is the GC chromatogram. Um, of the reaction mixture of copper free Sonogashira reaction. So we can see this is, this is finding acetylene. Um, this is before the reaction. We have this is the peak for finding acetylene. The retention time is about 3.78 minutes. And then we have the MSO at four something and we have iodobenzene. So we want to see this percentage of iodobenzene converted. So you see this is uh, this is at 140 degrees Celsius. You can see that some noises uh, appeared on the chromatogram because probably the condition was quite harsh. So the MSO is still there. Okay, there is no reduction in the MSO because it's just solvent. But you can see that phenylacetylene started to disappear. But we can see new uh, peak here, which is the presence, the appearance of diphenylacetylene. This is the product that we wanted. So we can see. Uh, that after 11 minutes, yeah, it will give you uh, diphenylacetylene. Yeah, so diphenylacetylene appeared at 12 minutes. Okay. So this is how we did uh, optimization. You can see this is the percent conversion. So one is acindiamine, the first one. The second one is cesium carbonate. The third one is potassium hydroxide. And the fourth one is perforidine. So we want to optimize. We want to find. You are looking for the best base for this reaction. So different reaction will get will give you different base. It depends. Yeah. Not all palladium shift bases uh, catalyze Sonogasha reaction will have Potassium hydroxide as the best base. It depends on the type of reaction, the type of solvent, and so on and so forth. But of course, if you want to expand this research further, you can always look at effects of different solvent, for example. That can also be done. Or effect of different uh, reactant, for example. That also can be done. So because different reactant also somehow will give you different rate of operation. So you can see the least performing base will be uh, piperidine. But the, uh, the most performing base is your potassium hydroxide based on the percent conversion of iodine. Yeah. And the second one, we have effect of catalyst loading. So we can see uh, we have 0 0.5 millimole percent, 1 millimole percent, 1.5 millimole percent, and 2.0 uh, millimole percent of the amount of catalyst. Sorry. You can see that um, we take sample for every hour, 3, 6, and 12. At 0 hour, all 0. But after 12 hours, you can see that uh, we can get 100% uh, of... Um, we can get 100% of uh, reaction. Yeah? 100% of percent conversion of iodobenzene. Okay? So two minimal percent was chosen to be the optimal loading as 100% conversion was achieved within the shorter reaction time. So you may question because at one minimal percent, you can also get 100% conversion. But that can only be achieved after 12 hour operation. When using two minimal percent at three hours of reaction, you can get 100% of conversion. So that's why Two millimole percent was chosen as the best or optimal at the study. Boleh setakat ni? <laughs> boleh ikut ya? Saya harap boleh, uh, boleh faham uh, how shift bases are being applied 
achieve uh, these complexes are being applied as a catalyst in the couple free sonal gastro reaction. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Kemudian, effect of temperature. We have effect of temperature. This is very obvious. You well, my ambition is always using as lower temperature as possible. That's why one of my PhD students, Nur Hostina, she has been trying to test this uh newly invented different catalyst, uh, that is her catalyst, newly invented catalyst at room temperature, for example. And we try to also use water as a solvent. But of course, when we're dealing with metal, most of them are not really soluble in 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 water. And that makes things difficult to, to test as homogeneous catalyst. And second thing is that at lower temperature, normally the reaction will become very, very slow. So we need higher temperature. Bear in mind that when we say higher temperature, we are talking about higher energy. Yeah, Higher energy needed to actually um, activate the reaction. So... Higher energy needed to activate reaction, meaning the activation energy is quite high. So with the presence of catalyst, we can lower this down. Now we, uh, you might be wondering which one is better, palladium or nickel. So you can see that most of our organic reaction, you can always check, you can Google this up while listening to me, you can Google this up. Most of the catalyst used in organic reaction is palladium. Yeah. Palladium is the very common catalyst in any organic reaction. Palladium works wonderfully as a catalyst. You can convert uh, our reactants into product at a very faster rate. But there is a research on nickel as well because nickel is considered as minor catalyst in the in organic reactions. While nickel has been said to be performing um, slightly inferior, lower than palladium. But it's good if we can um, increase or elevate the or enhance the performance of nickel complexes as the catalyst because nickel is at, uh, the price of nickel is much, much, much um, lower than palladium. I think it's about 50 to 100 times lower than palladium. So you can Google also the price of palladium. It can be as expensive as gold. Yeah, harga emas pun uh, somehow boleh menyamai harga uh, harga palladium di pasaran, palladium salts. Yeah? So that's why there is a research in shifting from palladium to uh, nickel complexes. Yeah? So you can see here uh, for palladium complexes, uh, in first series, palladium work better than nickel, definitely. Even after 12 hours, we cannot get 100% of conversion using nickel as a catalyst. Yeah. And for L2 series, you can see that palladium works better as a catalyst, meaning to say all palladium converted 100% of uh, iodobenzene into product. Yeah. But for nickel, the highest we can get is 91% uh, of conversion using nickel L1F. So F is our fluoro substituted uh, nickel complex. So with the presence of fluoro electron withdrawing, somehow we can see that the performance of catalyst is better. Yeah. But for uh, nickel 2, since I said I can only get uh, nitro as uh, my complex for nickel, so it gives you about 84%. So it's not bad. It's not that bad after our operation. Ada soalan ke setakat ni? Um, daripada student, any questions so far? Okay, yeah. I, yeah, can I ask you question? Ada yang mau bertanya dulu? Mahasiswa? Oh, Haikal. Okay, Haikal mau bertanya, silahkan. Ya, yeah, Ibu. Yeah. Ada, ada soalan. Ya, ada seorang ini Haikal namanya. Ya, silakan. Uh, Prof, izin bertanya mungkin untuk tadi efek dari um, temperatur ya. Tadi ya. mungkin saya masih belum menangkap gitu dari bagian mananya kayak si temperatur ini mempengaruhi uh, optimum, optimum dari si kataliknya gitu. Jadi apakah uh, dari 
suhu yang semakin meningkat akan menyebabkan dari reaksinya yang semakin cepat atau seperti apa sehingga bisa menyebabkan dari hasil katalisnya yang uh, hasilnya berbeda gitu. Mungkin itu saja pertanyaannya. Baik, terima kasih, Michael. Ya, uh, seperti yang saya nyatakan tadi, uh, dia tergantung kepada jenis reaction juga. Uh, we cannot say that the higher the temperature, the better the yield, the better the percentage yield, or the better the percent conversion. But somehow, in my reaction, in copper filter nugara reaction, using my compound as catalyst, uh, it seems so, the higher the temperature, the better the percent conversion. In certain reaction, for example, a friend of mine conducted Hack and Suzuki. He found, uh, he, she found that um, at 100 degrees Celsius, we can get 100% of conversion already. So, which means to say, uh, tidak semestinya dengan higher temperature, we can get higher uh, yield. But generally, uh, generally, we can say, generally, we can say that, of course, when you give more heat and energy, the particles of the reactants will uh, collide uh, more frequently. So this will fasten the reaction, will speed up the rate of reaction. Yeah? Dengan kehadiran haba yang lebih tinggi, generally we can say that uh, the catalytic performance will be higher. And uh, of course, there are some other factors affecting also. Uh, the faktor-faktor lain yang mempengaruhi tindak balas, contohnya mungkin the size of particles, the surface area, luas permukaan, yeah, the surface area of the catalyst or the surface area of the reactant also plays a role in catalytic performance in the operation. So there are many processes. But we cannot deny the fact that temperature juga memainkan peranan. Yeah? And in order to know details about how exactly temperature affects performance of catalyst, yang itu mungkin kita boleh bantu dengan uh, some DFT analysis menggunakan computational analysis atau kita buat uh, QSAR ya um, kita buat uh, structure activity relationship between kalau ada fluoro bagaimana kalau dengan kehadiran temperature bagaimana so that's something that we have to uh, discuss with you terima kasih atas soalannya uh, Haika uh, good observation and good question Okay, so other optimal conditions, we can conclude that palladium works better than nickel. Tetapi, even even though it is so, kita tidak boleh menafikan bahawa nickel juga uh, can be a good alternative for the catalyst. Yeah, probably we have to tweak here and there. So, you might be wondering, yeah, because palladium nickel, kerana, kenapa nickel is not really favored in certain reactions? Because nickel, the oxidation state can be... Uh, various, yeah, can be very. Sometimes it can be zero, one, two, and three. It can be zero valent. It can be monovalent. It can be divalent. It can be trivalent. But for palladium, normally, it, uh, the the valency of palladium is more is much more predictable. So it's only palladium zero, and then palladium two. So we can we can establish better mechanism with palladium, but not with nickel, yeah. So setelah kita, after we get the product, remember what is the product of our compound, uh, of our reaction? So so the guys reaction, you want to produce uh, alkyne. The alkyne that we wanted to produce it, uh, is actually diphenylacetylene. So you can see, uh, I have standard diphenylacetylene and this one is isolated diphenylacetylene. We can see that uh, the spectrum is very close to one another. So we can get the CHSP3 here, CHSP3, hybrid SP3, meaning CH3, yeah, metal. And then we can get alkyne here, a very low peak because it's quite non-polar. So the peak is very weak here. You can see this is uh, the CW triple bond C on the IR spectrum. And you can see also we have C double bond C here, yeah, at a lower frequency. And we have also CHSP2, CHSP2 vibration, and this is uh, stretching vibration, and this is SP2, for example, CH2. Yeah. So you can see uh, these are the, uh, the frequencies for significant bands. 
Yeah. Uh, well, bear in mind we have uh, out of plane CHSP2 here. Here you might be wondering why we have two values. One is uh, 756, the other one is 689. So different frequencies will give you a different kind of uh, band. Yeah? This is CHSP2, but this is out of plane uh, band. And we can run NMR also to identify the presence of um, diaphragmic acetylene. You can see that the chemical shift at 7.55, it appears as doublet of doublet. So I enlarge the structure here. Yeah? You can see I enlarge the um, spectrum here. You can see the, the integral of hydrogen is one hydrogen. Yeah. So that belongs to C1H. I'm sorry that I didn't include the structure here. But can you imagine the structure of diaphragmic acetylene? You can, right? I think is it is it here? The structure of diaphragmic acetylene is not here. Let me see whether we can see it. Yeah, this is diaphragmic acetylene. Yeah, we have two phenyl, and it is bridged by one alkyne. Yeah, so we identify that in our reaction. So you can see that we have C one H here. And the other one is also appearing as doublet as doublet at 7.37 with two uh, hydrogen. Yeah. So this belongs to C2H and also C3H. This is carbon 13. We just want to know how many peaks of how many peaks appear is equivalent to the number of carbons in your structure. So we can we can uh, identify all the um, carbon through this carbon 13 NMR spectrum. Yeah, we have one, two, three, four of um, aromatic carbon, and one is C triple bond C, which is your alkyne that appeared at 89.37 ppm. That is the chemical shift for alkyne. So we got all the carbon. So this is the very last stage of catalysis. We isolate the product. I didn't show you the uh, method, but uh, because it's quite uh, tedious. So we have to, after we have, we include palladium uh, complex, we include uh, our base and then our um, uh, solvent. And then we have, what is that? Our reactants are there, iodobenzene and phenacetylene. So all these mixture, you have to, uh, run some isolation. So you have to isolate only um, diphenyl acetylene as a product out of this mixture. So once you get, you dry it off. When you dry, you will get powder. This white powder, that when acetylene. That white powder, you can run IR and also NMR. So from IR and NMR, we can tell that we got the right uh, product. We got diphenyl acetylene. Masalahnya adalah cumanya percentage of diphenyl acetylene uh, lebih sedikit berbanding yang kita harapkan. I'm expect, I was expecting 100% of yield but we didn't get 100% of yield. We get only 40% of yield if I'm mistaken. So it's very very low. The percent conversion of hydrobenzene 100%. But the percent yield of the product is 40%. So there's something that we have to do further. So probably you can run the research further to identify why. And probably in the next endeavor, we can increase the we can increase the yield of our product. So based on the reactions, based on the reaction that we've done, we can propose the pro mechanism. Uh, there's no one in this world that has provided a uh, final or conclusive uh, mechanism for copper reaction. But uh, that's why I said this is just a proposed mechanism. Uh, you have learned catalysis, yeah, Doctor. You see, they have learned uh mechanism of catal of catalysis, right? Before this, yeah, yeah. Okay, so they are very familiar with the reactions. Yeah, first we have. Yeah, uh, uh, student ini baru saja belajar ini, uh, Doctor Cheryl, uh, di mata kuliah uh, kimia organologam. Yeah, ah, uh, yeah, betul. Yeah. Baru saja pertemuan kemarin ya, Hai Kal ya. Yang sonogashira ya. <laughs> <laughs> Jadi masih masih fresh ya. 
pasti fresh harusnya. <laughs> okay, um, so my compound, so we can see that uh, the catalyst is not ready to be a catalyst to catalyze the reaction if they are in the form of divalent. So somehow we have to reduce uh, the divalent of palladium to uh, zero valent. So in the form of zero valent only, the catalyst is ready to uh, be performing as a catalyst. So converting of our phenyl acetylene, yeah. First we take this phenyl, uh, sorry, uh, iodobenzene, and then we can see that iodobenzene, iodobenzene is being uh, carried by the catalyst here. And then later, after we add iodobenzene, we add also our uh, phenyl acetylene as our second reactant. So you will attach to your uh, metal like this. And you have to eliminate uh you have to eliminate the iodine and also you have to eliminate the hydrogen. Hydrogen iodine. You have to el eliminate this. So you eliminate this using your base. Base here is potassium hydroxide. So potassium hydroxide have the reaction to remove iodine and also hydrogen. That's why we have Hydrogen iodide as our byproduct and leaving this structure. But remember, we we want uh, the final product to be diphenyl acetylene. So we have to detach the ligand and the metal complexes from this diphenyl acetylene. So this is called reductive elimination because from uh, divalent, it becomes monovalent again. So we reduce the uh, process by giving you. The final product, which is diphenyl acetylene, yeah. Oh, sorry. So that's all untuk yang proposed mechanism, uh, dan juga for homogeneous catalysis of copper free sonogastra reaction. But as I said, uh, we did try to encapsulate our uh, product, our sorry, our uh, metal complexes in zeolite, why? And we also did try to encapsulate our uh, ligand, our sorry, our product, um, our oh, sorry, our metal complex, I'm sorry, in MCM41. So we tried many heterogeneous support. This is heterogeneous catalysis, yeah? And the third one, we also try to encapsulate or immobilize our metal complexes onto um, Polymer, for example, po polyvinyl alcohol. So we have PVA, we have uh, violet wine, we have MCF41. So this has a general support um, helping us to produce heterogeneous catalysts. Yeah? So we use flexible ligand method to encapsulate the red wine and metal complex. We have FTIR, XRD, TGA, FCM, ADX, and BET surface area analysis to analyze the zeolite before the encapsulation and after the encapsulation, hoping that you will increase the surface area. And later we try to uh, put test the product the, the product, the catalyst in sonogastral reaction. And then we did try kinetic properties studies of copper-free sonogastral reaction. So what we did was um we try to do with catalyzed reaction, the blue one, uncatalyzed reaction is the gray one. Yeah. And it is very obvious to see here that with the presence of a catalyst, the reaction will be two times faster than that without catalyst. Yeah. So I think that is all for now, Dr. You see, uh, yang ni, biological application saya akan uh, ajar next week. Yeah, insyaAllah. Betul ya, sih? Ya, uh, dokter, uh, Bu Yusinya sedang ada keperluan, mungkin akan saya bantu di sini untuk oh, yeah. tanya jawabnya. <laughs> ya, <laughs> yeah, jadi mungkin untuk teman-teman yang lain, ada yang ingin bertanya tentang mekanisme dari Pak? Ya, boleh ke Bu Yuli. Eh, Teh Yuli, maaf. Oke, okay, terima kasih. Uh, mungkin uh, Dr. Syahrul, saya akan menanyakan dalam bahasa Indonesia saja boleh, ya. Boleh, okay. boleh. Uh, saya akan menanyakan yang sekarang ada di tampilan di layar. 
uh, jika mekanisme seperti itu ya itu ada tahapan in situ reduction yeah. mungkin ya apakah itu berarti kompleks kompleks yang kita gunakan untuk katalis akan lebih uh, efektif uh, jika mudah mengalami uh, jika mudah direduksi menjadi yeah. valensinya nol ya yeah, yeah. gitu Apakah seperti itu? Ya, yeah, sebenarnya ya. Yeah. Ada uh, sebabnya kenapa kita menggunakan shift base sebagai ligand. Kerana shift base is a good reducing agent. So shift base boleh reduce kita punya metal daripada divalent menjadi uh, nol ataupun zero valent. So uh, itu adalah sebab kita menggunakan shift base sebagai ligand. Uh, saya tak saya uh, I did not have any experience using some other ligands tetapi mm. from my observation when we're using shift base the catalytic process will be smooth lebih lancar kerana shift base itu sendiri akan reduce metal daripada dua kepada kosong jadi kalau kita guna mungkin uh, kalau kita nak gantikan shift base dengan ligand yang lain boleh tapi properties that we have to have untuk ligand tersebut, dia mesti ada reducing properties supaya berlaku in situ reduction di situ. Oke, okay, terima kasih. Yeah. Uh, jadi, itu tadi juga alasan menggunakan shift base. Ya. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, kemudian, uh, ya menarik sekali Dr. Syahrul, karena saya juga terakhir belajar ini beberapa tahun yang lalu. Okay. Mungkin kalau teman-teman masih baru ya, belajarnya masih fresh, tapi saya banyak yang sudah lupa gitu. <laughs> <laughs> Jadi untuk shift base-nya ini kan tadi ada L1 type sama L2 type ya. Betul. Uh, nah itu punya uh, uh, punya efektivitas atau aktivitas kita yeah. menyebutnya yang berbeda ya, Dokter Syahrul. Yeah. Uh, uh, nah itu uh, L1 Type sama L2 type tadi kan dibedakan uh, dari R- aminnya, amina, aminanya ya, yeah. boleh diperlihatkan. Yeah. Ini untuk L2, L2, L1-nya ada aromatik, oh, L2-nya yeah. alifatik ya. Yeah. Iya. Yeah. Nah, kalau tidak salah tadi L2 itu lebih punya, Betul. lebih bisa ini ya menghasilkan atau aktivitasnya lebih tinggi mungkin ya. Iya, iya, benar. Ya. Uh, untuk penggantian saya menyebutnya itu substituen apakah ya. sama penyebutannya? Sama. Sama ya. Nah, apa yang harus dipertimbangkan untuk penggantian substituen pada shift base itu, Dokter Syahrul mungkin. Iya. Oke, terima Sebut. kasih. Baik, terima kasih. Ya, uh, jadi um, there are many studies on this catalytic performance of uh, transition metal complexes. Sebentar ya, saya perlu charge. Uh, saya perlu charge laptop. Okay. Jadi, there are many factors affecting. Ada banyak alasan kenapa ses, uh, sesetengah metal bagus, setengah metal tak bagus. So, saya mengandaikan uh, satu faktornya adalah kerana uh, amin yang digunakan. Ya, yeah? Amina yang digunakan berbeda Well, I hope that they will give different uh, effects, and it does. Yeah. Well, initially, my hypothesis was, saya mengandalkan bahawa um, complexes yang ada aromatic diamin akan lebih baik kerana wujudnya delocalization of electrons. Because elektron boleh bergerak dengan lebih baik menggunakan aromatic diamin sebagai jambatan, jambatannya as a bridge. Tetapi, well, when you are doing Experimentally, it shows otherwise. Dia menunjukkan bahawa kehadiran alifatik itu lebih bagus. Nanti nanti di semester depan pula. Minggu depan saya akan tunjukkan kompon yang sama tetapi untuk biological activities pula. And then somehow dalam biological activities pun alifatik works better. So somehow that, that's experiment. Dan itu satu. Faktornya satu adalah amina berbeda mungkin menunjukkan kesan yang berbeza. Jadi kalau kita nak meningkatkan prestasi atau performance of catalyst, we can always 
uh, change the ending if you want to. Kedua adalah substituent, correct. Uh, sebab itu, in every research that I do, um, saya selalu membezakan, saya mesti varia memvariasikan satu kumpulan ada electron withdrawing, satu kumpulan ada electron donating. Dalam satu series yang sama, yang bezanya adalah dia ada fluoro, chloro, nitro, yang itu adalah electron withdrawing substituents. Kemudian satu lagi saya letak methyl methoxy, yang itu adalah electron donating. Yang ini juga di setengah uh, research paper, they stated that dengan ada uh, electron withdrawing, performance of the catalyst will be better. Ya, yeah. dengan kehadiran electron withdrawing, performance of the catalyst will be better. That can also be proved. Tapi ini kembali kepada basic mechanism. Yeah. Jadi dua faktor, structure of amine and second is the presence of different substituents. These two can affect the performance of catalyst. Ketiga adalah the geometry of the metal. So idea octahedral atau square planar atau tetrahedral atau square bipyramidal. So different geometries juga memainkan peranan kerana kita nak ada surface area yang lebih baik. So, saya menggunakan square planar because I believe the planarity of the uh, complexes ini boleh menjadikan katalis itu lebih baik. Yeah. So, ada tiga faktor. Tetapi again, I would like to uh, emphasize bahawa tidak ada research yang konklusif. Maksudnya, kalau letak aromatic diamine and we put also Uh, fluoro fluoro ataupun any um, electron withdrawing group and we put also square planar it will guarantee performance better no there is no such guarantee because sometimes dia berlaku sebaliknya so that's why kita memerlukan computational study di sini untuk melihat kadang-kadang ada homolumo gap nya bagaimana kalau dengan palladium dan nickel which one is having bigger gap homo dan lumo mungkin kalau bigger the gap susah untuk elektron jam, maka aktivi aktivitasnya juga semakin kurang. Begitu. And again, um, kalau kita tengok di nikel, ya, di sini nikel, uh, sebab kalau di palladium, kita tak akan nampak banyak perbezaan kerana di palladium, semuanya 100% at any hour. Tapi kalau kita tengok nikel, uh, dengan ada yang ni, H ini maksudnya unsubstituted. Tapi dengan ada substitutnya fluoro, better, fluoro better, but slightly better, but not much as better as uh, some other, not as low as some other uh, substitutes. Yeah, you can see also with the presence of uh, nitro dalam palladium DC, palladium screening, screening. You can see also here with the presence of uh, nitro, uh, you can get highest conversion. But then again, The trend is not consistent, so we cannot conclusively say kena ada ini, maka performance-nya better. We have to research pada work with it. Itu saja jawapan saya. Harap membantu ya. Okay, terima kasih Dr. Tafrul. <laughs> Sangat membantu sekali. Yeah. Itu Selamat. saja mungkin pertanyaan dari saya. Baik, terima kasih Ibu. Terima kasih ya Mbak Yu. Mbak Yuli ini teman teman uh, kuliah uh, Dr. Syahrul. Yeah. Dulu uh, satu supervision sama uh, Prof Julia Onggo di ITB. Oh, okay. Prof Julia yeah. Onggo itu yeah. uh, saya punya examiner untuk PhD. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kemarin saya ke ITB saya jumpa Prof Julia. Iya. Ya, saya lihat fotonya dari uh, Bu Irma share foto Dr. Syahrul dengan Oh ya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ya, alhamdulillah berkesempatan jumpa dengan Prof Julia. Kabarnya sudah mau berpensiun ya? Ya, betul. Tahun depan pensiun. Tahun depan. Oh, Oke. Okay. <laughs> ya, uh, oke. Okay. Iya. <laughs> Ada soalan lain atau bagaimana? Well, ya, untuk, Pak. ya untuk biological studies itu saya bawa ke depan kerana um, yang itu probably lebih uh, banyak yang mahu saya 
Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, because I'm doing catalysis and biology mm -hmm. studies. So, ada yang anti-cancer, ada DNA binding, ada sensor, ada mm -hmm. juga uh, antibacteria. So, yang tu lebih lain sedikit. Uh, yeah. Konteksnya. So, basicnya harus... Uh, Mengerti dulu ini kan ya, Dr. Syahrul. Ya, yeah, yeah. yeah. harus faham yang ini dulu. Somehow <laughs> baru boleh yeah. faham yang itu. Yang itu lain sikit. Ya, yeah. Konsepnya banyak biologi berbanding chemistry. Iya, yeah, betul. <laughs> And Angel ya, raise hand. Come again? Ya, yeah, silakan Angel. Oh, Angel. Iya. Okay. Uh... Angelica, Angel, bidadari ya. Yeah. Iya. <laughs> bidadari kimia unpad ini. <laughs> oh. Ya, yeah, um, thank you for the presentation and the opportunity, uh, Bu Yusi and Dr. Cheryl. Um, so first, I'm sure in the experiment, uh, doctor follow the flow chart as yeah. shown in the beginning. Yeah. And the PD LN2 catalysis shown the best activity as the yield obtained 100% at yeah. less hour than the others. Correct. But in the experiment, Uh, you explained before, it only obtained 20% yield. So how do we redesign or what should we change? Like in which steps? Thank you. It's first question. Which one? 20%? Which one? Um, in the experiment you said before, like it's only obtained like 20% or am I miss? Yeah, uh, well, well, when we, because we have uh, two different uh, groups of catalysts, so I pick randomly from L1 and L2 and to see mm. which one, yeah, which one giving better, better yield. But they, are, they you can see from here that uh, uh, if you compare one to one, probably you can say, sorry. L1 series also give about the same results, but cumulatively, uh, you can see that L2 series perform slightly better than L1 series. But of course, at the end of the reaction letter, at the end of the research and the letter, we have to also test all compounds. But for the sake of optimization, we cannot use. No, we cannot. Tapi kita boleh guna. Cuma we don't have much time and resources to use all uh, catalysts dalam uh, optimization because in optimization letter we have uh, yeah we have different base different catalysts and different temperature imagine if i use all 12 catalysts so i have to repeat 12 times with potassium hydroxide 12 times with potassium carbon uh, cesium carbon 12 times with i think that i mean 12 times with pepperidin so that's why to uh a cut it short, we just pick one big group and then we tested them in the optimization process. Am I answering your question, Angelic? Angel? Uh, yeah, doctor. Um, and thank you for the answer. This is the second question, maybe about the encapsulation. Uh, yeah, how encapsulation. Do we, how okay. do we plan it? Like, uh, is it planned in the beginning or? after we obtain the product we desired? Okay. Uh, well, it, for master's and PhD studies, normally we, we plan it earlier. So it is already in the objective that they have to encapsulate certain things. Like for my PhD, I did with MCM41. And then for my students, and then they try to do uh, zero lab one. So normally the plan was done much earlier. But we are not going to test all, okay? We are not going to test all palladium because it's going to be uh, not efficient to do that. So we can only try one uh, palladium. So the, that one palladium is normally chosen from the homogeneous catalysis from, from these results. We know that, for example, from these results, the best will be your palladium. Yeah? And your palladium, uh, palladium with nitro, for example, is the best catalyst. So we choose that one. And then it can then and then we encapsulate with zero light or hydrogenous catalysis. We don't do we don't do all complexes for hydrogenous catalysis. Yeah, yeah, Yes, very 
a very, very interested matter for me, and thank you for the answer. You're welcome. Uh, Dr. Sahrul, uh, mau yeah, ada saya mau tanya. Yeah. <laughs> uh, saya kan kerja dengan ini ya, apa uh, kompleksnya uh, apa yang normal, yang H2 salen ya, H2 salen yang normal. <laughs> Jadi tidak ada apa uh, variasi uh, etilen di amin di situ ya, tidak ah, ada variasi. Okay. Ya. Yeah. Apakah itu bisa uh, prospektif juga ya untuk uh, digunakan uh, sebagai katalis uh, dengan paladium gitu ya? Boleh dicoba, uh. boleh dicoba. Yang ini ibu menggunakan uh, etilen dan amin ya, IN ya, sebagai amin. Iya. Yeah. Kemudian dengan aldehyde atau keton? Ini aldehyde. Iya, saya rasa aldehyde saja dengan etilen di amin. Uh, it's, it's a common salen, ya. Yeah. Ya, kaman salen. Uh, but the uh, the metal uh, is mang manganese. Manganese, okay. Ya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kalau Bagi... boleh saya tahu apa geometrinya ya dengan manganese? What is the molecular geometry? Octahedral. 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 Okay. Octahedral and uh, uh, membentuk ini apa? Uh, polymeric structure. Polymeric, okay. Ya, ada ada bridging ligand di situ. Ada bridging ligand, ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Oke. Okay. Yeah, Jadi uh, soalannya sama ada boleh di diuji okay. sebagai katalis ya? Uh -huh. Boleh, boleh. Uh -huh. uh, ya, yeah. uh, kerana saya juga anda menggunakan mengenai, tetapi my uh -huh. my early hypothesis is the performance will be much lower than palladium, uh -huh. will be much lower than palladium. Yeah. Uh, because I think it has to do with the group. So kalau kita perasan, kebanyakan red catalyst yang bagus, they are coming from group D dan platinum, palladium, nickel. So they are from the same group. Yeah. If you, yeah, if using different group, uh, mm -hmm. somehow, yeah, of course, they, we need further research to establish these facts. But somehow, mm -hmm. it's not as good as D10 metal. Yeah. Yeah. Saya rasa mungkin ada kaitan dengan uh, uh, MP orbital in uh, MPD orbitalsnya atau yeah. ada kaitan dengan geometrinya atau ada kaitan juga because kalau kalau ya yeah, dan ada kaitan juga dengan homolumo gapnya sebab dalam satu satu kompleks itu elektron tu harus bergerak dengan lancar jadi sebab tu kita ada uh, sebab tu kita ada addition of di sini, satu kita ada positive addition atau reductive elimination. These two processes mesti berlaku dengan pantas dan dengan smooth, dengan lancar. Kalau kita ada group lain, probably ia akan mengganggu sedikit bila you mau jat. Electron move pertamanya daripada lumo of the ligand kepada empty orbital of the metal. Kemudian daripada fill empty orbital, sorry, fill orbital of the D of the metal, kemudian bergerak kepada lumo of the ligand. Saya rasa di situ ada sedikit, akan sedikit stuck if you are using different metal. Tapi ini pendapat saya, but of course we have to run certain experiments. Boleh dicuba buat UC, mungkin boleh hantar manganesnya kepada kami untuk dicuba. Baik, harus ada lagi. Ya, di, kalau di UCM itu, uh, apakah semua um, instrumen itu uh, uh, tersedia ya? Macam mana? Dari sini? Instrumen ya, instrumen yang uh, untuk analisis itu semua tersedia di UCM atau ya. harus uh, cek ke luar UCM gitu? Contohnya apa? Kalau di sini ada semuanya. Ada, ada semuanya. Ada RUB, NMR, single crystal, SRD. Kalau dia SRD, hmm. ada PSEM, ada dua, CSN juga ada. Oh, jadi ada. macam uh, lab sentral juga ya? Sentral yeah. uh, analisis ya? Yeah. Iya. Di sini kalau kesempatan ya, please datang ya, Bu Yusi atau Bu Yudi mm -hmm. boleh datang ke sini dan boleh lihat. Mm -hmm. Kami, we have one building just for research lab. One ah. building just for research lab. Jadi di situ ada ada banyak instrumen yang diletakkan di satu tempat. Tetapi for NMR, dia jauh sedikit tapi ada di di UITM uh, Puncak Alam 30 minutes drive. 
daripada Syah Alam. Tapi boleh juga dihantar ke sana. Ya, mungkin uh, nanti kalau ada kesempatan <laughs> mau main ke UIU ITM. <laughs> ya, boleh lewat ke sini nanti saya bawa tour kampus. <laughs> ya, insya Allah. <laughs> ya, baik. Uh, saya saya kembalikan dulu ke Haikal ya, uh, Dr. Syahrul, karena saya ada aktiviti sedikit okay. di luar. Silakan Haikal. <laughs> baik, terima kasih Bu Yusi. Apa ketemu lagi ya? Ya, yeah. yeah. uh, terima kasih ya Bu Yusi dan Dokter Syahrul atas jawabannya. Mungkin dari teman-teman yang lain ada yang ingin ditanyakan terkait materi ini? Ya yeah, mungkin, mungkin ini juga uh, Dokter saya ingin bertanya. Mungkin tadi terkait yang L. PDL yang tadi yang Liga L1 itu pertimbangan kita memilih dari si liganya itu apa ya? Kayak tadi kan sempat dijelaskan mungkin ya perlu riset lebih lanjut untuk si uh, pengaruhnya. Tapi mungkin yang ingin tanyakan ketika kita ingin mengaplikasikan si skip base ini ke metalnya itu uh, parameter yang kita jadikan patokan itu ada apa aja, dokter? Maksudnya Uh, jenis metalnya ya iya yeah. harus metal yang bagaimana ya iya yeah. karena kan oh. tadi sempat ada yang NI sama PD juga jadi kenapa yang lain belum dipergunakan iya yeah, uh, yeah. sebenarnya well I did with some other metal juga sebenarnya ada metal lain saya guna iron iron 2 iron 3 kemudian kita juga guna ada juga manganese ada vanadium 4 ada platinum ada juga uh, sebentar Okay. Dan juga F block metals, red earth metal seperti lanthanide uh, group, lanthanum. So we use that also as our metal. Jadi pemilihan metal bergantung. Tapi shift base, if you reach shift base is the most versatile ligand, paling most research ligand. Kerana dia diletak apa pun metal dia boleh claw, dia boleh membina ikatan dengan apa apa pun metal. Jadi uh, terserah apa pun metal kita boleh terserah kita kalau kita mahu guna uh, metal apa pun masih boleh digunakan. Cuma nya probably gantung kepada salt ya. Kalau metal salt, kalau palladium, palladium acetate bagus. Kalau dia chloride susah sikit. Chloro somehow it's not easy to move. Tapi kalau kita guna nickel juga, saya guna nickel acetate tetrahydrate. So acetate somehow uh, good living group. So bila dia lift Nikel kita boleh masuk dengan menggunakan met kita punya ligand sendiri begitu. Berarti memang kembali lagi ke bagian ligandnya aja ya Prof ya untuk metal nanti kayak menyesuaikan gitu ya? Iya uh, boleh dicuba tapi kebanyakan metal memang boleh kebanyakan hmm. metal memang boleh di react untuk to, to react with sheet hmm. base boleh. Kamu boleh we can get the complex insyaallah. Okay. Terima kasih uh, Dokter atas pertanyaan mungkin dari teman-teman yang lain. Ada yang ingin ditanyakan kembali tentang dari uh, reaction ini mungkin atau mungkin dari materinya? Mungkin ditunggu dulu hingga 11, 12 kali ya dokter ya? Macam mana? Ditunggu hingga pukul 11, 12? Iya boleh. Oh sebab di sini 12, sudah pukul 12. Jadi saya oh. confused. <laughs> ini 12, 11. Dia lah satu, satu jam lewat dia. Iya. Ya. <laughs> Oke okay, mungkin karena tidak ada yang ingin tanyakan lagi Mungkin dicukupkan saja ya dokter untuk hari ini Dan dilanjut ya, pada pertemuan minggu depan Sekali lagi ya, saya ucapkan terima kasih banyak dokter atas kesempatannya sama Telah sama. berbagi ilmunya kepada kami Semoga menjadi berkah juga dan ilmunya Jadi Amin. pahala jariah ya. Mungkin cukup sekian Terima ya. kasih dokter dan diperkenankan untuk meninggalkan semua Terima, terima kasih ya dokter Assalamualaikum semua terima kasih Bye bye Assalamualaikum. Hati ya, Haikal. Makasih. <laughs> ya, Ibu, ini saya end saja ya, Bu. <laughs>